Hi, welcome to Podpath Studios Midweek Mini, and this uh, mini is all about 3D printing. Now, we get asked a lot about 3D printing.、Uh, what printers do we use? How do we print things? What materials do we print with? How do we get things knocked out so quickly? All that kind of stuff. So, what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit of story about how we started, why we started, and hopefully it might help you kind of understand this tech a little bit more and. Help you make some decisions about what kit you might like to buy, or whether you want to get into this at all. So, we started off printing, or I started off printing about five years ago now. And first printer I got was、uh, I never know how to pronounce this one heyo、uh, duplicator printer, which was a dual head 3D printer. And it sat on the kitchen table. It made lots of noise, and it smelt quite bad when we printed certain things. But It was great fun, but at the time technology was very very new, and I knew at the time I was buying into something that was very much kind of a hobbyist technology. So I knew that I'd have to learn about how to fix it or clear the nozzles out, not if they got clogged up, when they got clogged up. And it was that was kind of part of the process then, that you you got this kit, you learned how to use it, and it was it was fun. There's lots of forums, there's lots of communities and people you could talk to. Um, but anyway, the, the printer we had was was amazing, and to be honest, out of the box, it was amazing. We our first steam up Batmobile, loads of the stuff on that was three D printed with that printer.、Um, the chains on it, the detailing on it, the brackets on it. You know, I got I got a bit addicted to it in the end. I I would sit instead of going and machining a bracket in metal, if I could get away with it being made in plastic, I would literally literally draw it on the computer and 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 print it. Um, now there's two parts to 3D printing. There's the hardware, which you can see here, and then there's the software. Software we're going to talk about a little bit later, and the kind of software that we decided to go with.、Uh, now we're just going to look at the hardware. Now in front of me here is, if you like, our second, third, and fourth generation 3D printers that we've that we've opted into. I sold the, my first printer, and I sold it because we started to become a little bit more commercial, and I needed something that. Was going to be a little bit more reliable. That I wasn't spending a lot of time fixing and and clearing the heads out and worrying about whether it was going to print overnight or fail. So we we opted for this. This is a, a more commercial style printer. Cost considerably more money than the first one. And if you notice, it's got the the dual head that you can see in here.、Uh, and I had that on the first one. Now, for those of you that don't know how three three D printing works, the dual head is you can print、uh, different materials. Or different colour materials with at the same time. Now, 3D printing is basically uses this. There's obviously new technologies for 3D printing. So this particular technology、uh, uses this filament. Now, this filament is it's just plastic basically.、It、comes in lots of different varieties. You've got ABS, PLA, PET. There's, there's loads, and we, we in the description below we'll put some different you know what these things do. But basically. In essence, what this does—it's plastic. It goes through a heating element. It heats it up, and then it oozes out of the nozzle, and it builds it up. A little bit like when you were at school, you used to make those clay pots. You used to roll sausages of clay out, and then you used to coil them around, and then stick them all together with your finger. It's exactly the same. It builds up coils of this material, which is heated together into very, very thin layers, and it then builds up a product. It's fascinating to watch. If you've never seen 3D printers working before, they are fascinating to watch. You always know when somebody's bought their 3D printer for the first time because they will sit there for hours watching it. It's like watching a kettle boiling. But yeah, anyway. So this one was useful in that you can print, as I said, with different colours. Or in my magic box of tricks here, see here, I've printed this this sphere. This is、uh, didn't work. It failed. But inside it, it has a support material. Now it needs a support material because when you print something, you can't print in midair. It's got to stick to something. Now you need to get the support material out. If you print the support material with the same material you print this with, it can be problematic sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. If you have a dual head machine, you could print with, for example, PLA, which is a plastic for the outside, but then you could print with PVA on the inside. Now PVA is water soluble. So you take your print, you stick it in a bucket of water for a couple of days, and when you come back, all your support material is melted away. So you now have a perfect print 
and it's all melted away. And you can do that with dual head machines, and you can also print with different colours if you uh, if you wanted to. I don't do that with this one. The reason I bought a dual head one is redundancy. If there was an issue with one of the heads when it was printing, if it clogged up, if it stopped working, I could very quickly switch to the other head, continue to print, and then worry about fixing it later. Technology moves forwards, and we needed to sort of move forwards with it. Um, we were thinking about what what could we you know could we could we improve the speed of the prints, the reliability of the prints, the detail of the prints, um, and yeah, there's lots of things to consider. This little this little one here is interesting. I bought this as a Christmas present to myself. It was literally a kit that you buy on eBay, make yourself a 3D printer. About 100 quid it cost or something like that. And it was so much fun putting it together. It really was fun. But it was literally a, it was, it was hobby, it was, it was fun. And when things broke, I stuck it back together and I learned how to use the, the, you know, the coding within it. It was really, really good fun. But do you know what surprised me about this is how good it was. And it seriously made me question why I spent so much money on that. However, that was bought, you know, at a time that they cost what they cost. They're a lot cheaper now. Print quality from this is almost as good as that. Uh, it, it's, it's really surprising. But the thing about this that you've probably noticed is it's a different configuration. In this one, this, this bed here moves up and down. So this print head doesn't move. It moves backwards and forwards, left and right, but it can't move up and down. The bed itself moves up and down. So as the print starts to evolve, the bed moves down. With this kind of printer, they're called Delta printers, this whole unit comes down and it moves around like this. The bed doesn't move. The bed stays where it is and the head moves and it gradually starts lifting up like this. Delta printers are amazing to watch. They are like little robots scurrying around making things. They, they are really, really good fun. They're also seriously fast. They can print much quicker, or in my experience, this, these types of printers print much, much quicker than these, just as reliably. Um, so I got kind of hooked on Delta printers and how easy it was to put it all together. So decided to upscale and um, we went with this beauty, which is an Anycubic Predator. It's, it's exactly the same sort of design, it's just bigger. Um, but reliability wise, it's just incredible. I, I can't fault it. It's actually more reliable than what was classed as a commercial printer. It, I don't think I've had yet, I think in, in, in probably the several thousand prints that it's done, I've probably had three, four failures and prints. It's, it's that good. Um, a lot of it is down to the, the bed material. Now, on the early printers, this, this actually was a very good one. It had a glass bed and it's a heated bed. Now, the, the trick with 3D printing is this. The first layer must stick to the bed. If the first layer that you print doesn't stick to the bed, every other layer that sticks to that layer is going to fail. So that first layer is critically important that you get it all right. Now, in early 3D printers, you had to do a process called self-leveling. You had to bring the bed up to the nozzle. The nozzle had to be a few milli well, one millimeter or the thickness of a piece of paper. You put your piece of paper under, you set your different points on the bed and you leveled the bed. And when you got the bed leveled and you were 100% sure it was perfectly leveled, your print would start and it would stick to the bed and it would work. But if you were a millimeter out here or a fraction of a millimeter out there, your print would fail. So that's what caused a lot of people problems. The, the first layer just simply not sticking to the bed. That's been kind of overcome a lot with a lot of these printers now. Keep moving things around here. They've now got these little gadgets. This is called a self-leveling device and it literally clips on there like that. It's magnetic. And you press a button, it comes down and it self-levels itself. There's a sensor in here and it goes beep, 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 beep. It self-levels itself. I take it off. I start my first print and it just prints. The, the, le the bed is completely leveled up. There's no, no pieces of cardboard have to be stuffed underneath to get it leveled, which means most of the time your first layer is nicely stuck to the bed. 
meaning subsequent layers stick nicely to that one and generally your print won't fail. This one here takes that process to the next level in that this is a ceramic bed. Um, it's a heated bed as they all are. Um, it uses a, an automatic leveling system, but it's just very, very sophisticated. Um, and it works. <laughs> and, and that's the most important thing. So you might be thinking, what was wrong with this? Why didn't I stay with this little delta? If it was so good, why did I need to get this? Okay, next generation. It, it is incredibly reliable. I, I'll buy another one of these. If I, if I need another printer tomorrow, I'll go and buy another one of these. Delta printers, in my opinion, they're quicker, they're more reliable, they move faster, um, parts are easier to, to, to fix. I, I love them. I love them. I, I, you know, they're great, don't get me wrong, but these, these are better. Now, printing area. People go, well, I've got bigger printer, you can print bigger things, so it doesn't take as long. Um, yeah. I agree. I mean, we, we print lots of big things. This here, for example, if I pop that on the bed there, you can see. This is a part of an arm of a Terminator arm. Um, and in fact, it's, I've actually got one here that's finished. This is a three quarter size one. You can see here all the detailing. And basically, we could probably just about print that complete on that printer if we wanted to. But I don't want to. One thing I've learned. OK, if you're doing this as a hobby print, Let's say we put a print on of the full arm. We've done all our software calculations and the print is going to take a hundred hours. Let's say hypothetically. What if we get halfway through, we get 50 hours in and the print fails. Something happens and, and it prints fail. The filament might run out, it might break, a layer might not work. If you're printing from a hobbyist point of view, it's like, okay, it's annoying. You've wasted filament, you've wasted time, but you just do it again. If you do have you doing it a little bit from, from a commercial point of view and you need to print something and you need to know that you've got to get it out at a certain time, printing as a big object can be a big risk. Um, what I tend to do is I print things smaller and fix them together. So, for example, here you can see this, this is printed. That's part of an arm there. That's another rod that's being printed. Something like that might take 10 hours to print. Something like that might take two hours to print. But if it fails, it's much easier and much quicker to just reprint that part. You're not reprinting the whole part. And then if you're clever with your software, when you start clicking these things together, you can create seamless joins. Um, and there really isn't a problem there at all. Nothing wrong with printing large scale, but I generally print small scale, fix things together. And obviously, um, you know, that's just down to, to personal choice. We're asked a lot of the time, uh, can you print really complicated things? Yeah, I mean, this is from, uh, I didn't create this. This was off a file of Thingiverse. Uh, again, we've put the link below. It's a, a great place if you want to go and find 3D printing resources because, you, you know, you want to get straight off and start printing designs that other people have created. But this has got moving gears. Um, you know, it's a little turtle that moves its little wings up and down, its, its fins up and down. And all these gears and all move around and yeah you can print really really complicated things um, or you can create simple things here's a couple of our little dragon eggs that we're using for our dragon project right then so to to sum up about 3d printers I think if you want to get into 3d printing do it because it's fun but don't go out and spend loads of money honestly don't do it go and spend a hundred quid Buy a 3D printer kit and build it yourself. Learn about what all this stuff does, how it works. It's so much fun. If you know, obviously, if you're not under pressure to produce things to certain deadlines and you're not buying the machine for commercial reasons, get a kit and build it. Absolutely no question. Even this, even this arrived as a kit. It was a big kit. But the fun was putting it together. The fun was seeing it work for the first time. Um, so yeah, that absolutely 100% my recommendation. Secondly, go for a self-leveling bed and go for a heated bed. Now, once you do your research, you'll learn that certain materials, you don't need to use a heated bed. Certain materials, ABS, for example, you need to print on a heated bed. It's just the way it sticks to it. 
PLA doesn't need a heated bed. I would recommend though, buy a heated bed anyway, because you never know how you're gonna change in the future. You can turn it off if you don't need it. Self-leveling is a great way to go. Um, so if you can get a self-leveling system, buy it. Although, you'll learn a lot by not having it, um, but you will get more failures on your prints. Um, Software-wise, we're gonna kind of move on to. Um, software, getting the right software is critical, but as I said, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Really, have fun. It is fun 3D printing. It takes time. Don't think that you're gonna print something like this in three minutes or four minutes. This is, this is several hours worth of printing going on here. This is not a laser cutter where you can put your, your image in, you put your block of wood in, and three seconds later, you've got a nice cut piece of, of wood. That's, that's not this. This is 3D printing. This is totally, totally different. We are going to create an object which we are going to be able to send to our 3D printer and print. Now, I'm currently in a program called uh, Tinkercad. Tinkercad is amazing. Go online, type in tinkercad.com and basically create an online account and then you'll be creating your own models, 3D CAD, computer-aided design models like this. Now, this is incredibly simple. Now, there are other ways to create 3D models. We could have a look over, drop over to here, uh, Thingiverse. And Thingiverse is full of thousands upon thousands upon thousands of different models that other people have created that we can print. Here's one you probably recognize from earlier. Now, the, the thing with Thingiverse is majority of these are free so if you want to kind of browse through you can find things that you like and you can print them um, you can even up create an account in here and upload your own creations now what we are going to do here is we're going to create our own piece of artwork now obviously here in Tinkercad you have to kind of go in and you have to sort of start to become familiar with all the kind of the the buttons that you can click to make things but it is very very simple to use it's, it's really not difficult but like all uh, computer-aided design programs, there is a learning curve and you have to be patient. So, what I've done here is I said I've loaded up Tinkercad, got my workspace, and I've, all I've done here is drag in two boxes, two cubes, one there and one there. And then this one here, I've simply made it half the height of the first cube, the first box. And really, that's it. I'm not going to make my print any more complicated than this. So if you wanted to literally make a little box to keep your keys in by the front door, or you wanted to make a bracket or something like this, there is no simpler way to do it. This is, this is very, very simple. Now, we can't just click a button and print this. We have to actually save this into a format that our printer is going to understand. Now, to do that, what we're actually going to do is we're going to select all of this model, and then we're going to come up here and we're going to go to Export. Now, we're actually going to export it as a .stl file, and that is a standard file that all 3D printers understand. Once we've got that file saved, we'll be able to open that with our 3D control software, our printing software. So we're going to click that, saves it to our workspace. What we're then going to do is I'm going to then open my 3D printing software. Now, the software I've got here and the software I've chosen to use is called Simplify 3D. Now, this is a paid version software. Uh, cost us about £100 when we bought it many, many years ago. There are lots of free versions of 3D printing software. Cura is the one that an awful lot of people use and actually comes bundled with an awful lot of 3D printers. You get a free copy of Cura. Nothing wrong with it. Absolutely perfect. I just chose to use this one many years ago um, because... It, it was easy to use, the learning curve wasn't very steep, I wanted to get into printing very quickly. It's a brilliant, brilliant po program. I can't, I, I can't fault it in any way. It gives me huge amounts of control over my prints and um, updates, of course, seem to go on forever, which is, which is brilliant. So, anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click Import and then I'm going to go to my file that I saved and there we go, I'm going to drop in my print. There's my little little box that I created earlier in Tinkercad and then I can just pop back over there and have a look and there it is still there. My little box I created and now you can see it inside Simplify 3D, inside my 3D control printing software. 
So this is where I'm going to work on it now. Now, I need to give my printer a little bit more information before I print this. And I do that through an edit panel. Most 3D printing software operates in this way. This one's very simple. We click there and it brings up the editing panel. Now, I have to apply certain parameters to this to, to give this to my printer so it will print it correctly in the way I want it printed, basically. This uses a, a linear uh, workflow on this one here. So we start at this end. Extruder. The extruder is what we're printing with. The machine automatically sets all this up as it did when I installed the software. I installed the software, told the software what printer I had. All of this was configured for me automatically. So I'm not going to worry about that tab. I'm going to click on the next one. Layer. Now, all 3D prints are built up with layers. And we build these layers up as we print. As I remember, as I said, like a coiled pot building up. Now, the thickness of these layers depends on the resolution that we set in our layer. Now, up here, there's some quick and easy menus. We've got fast, medium, and high. Let's click high. You notice here it goes to 0 0.1. That makes the layer incredibly fine. So the print is going to be incredibly detailed and incredibly fine, but it will take longer to print because the layers are so much smaller and closer together. If I go up here and I change it to medium, takes it up to 0 0.2, layers are a little bit wider apart. Take it to 3, the layers are even wider apart, 0 0.3. Maybe now you might even be able to see the layers on 0 0.3. I'm going to print it on 0 0.3 because we're just going to print this quickly to kind of show you what, what we can do here. And to be perfectly honest, I actually print quite a lot on, on 0 0.3 because it, it might be the lowest resolution on this particular piece of software, but that's still pretty good. We then move across our, through our workflow and we go to additions. Now, you can see here, there's lots of things that we can add, things like rafts and shields and all sorts. A raft, for example, if you had printed this and, it, and for example, it hadn't stuck to the bed and you were getting frustrated. What you need to do is print a raft. Now a raft is a layer that is printed onto the bed that generally will stick really, really well to the bed. If your raft sticks well to the bed, of course your print is going to stick to the raft very easily because it's like it's just printing to itself. And then of course when you're finished with it at the end of the print you just pull the raft off. Great way to if you've got problems with your, with your project sticking to the bed, use a raft. I don't have that problem with this printer, so I'm actually not going to use that in this instance. I'm, what I am going to use, though, is this. Uh, it says here, skirt, brim. Uh, what I use this for is, as the nozzle comes down, it will start printing a rim around the edge. And it kind of goes through a couple of these just to kind of get the nozzle ready for printing to get rid of any bubbles or any issues that there might be with printing. And then it goes into the print. So it's just almost like a way of cleaning the nozzle before you start printing. So I just kind of use that one. Infill. Now, infill is exactly what it says it is. If I go to here and I move that right up to 100%, this object is going to become solid. If I move it to zero, the object is going to be hollow. And I can choose you know, any, any position in between, whether I want it hollow, whether I want it solid. Now, I'm actually going to have mine as hollow. However, what I need to do to make sure this isn't going to be like an eggshell when it's printed, you know, you touch it and it then just breaks, I'm actually going to pop back to where it says layer, and I'm going to look at my layers, top solid layers, bottom solid layers, and outside perimeter shells. I'm going to set these to five. This is five layers. If I was to set that to one, it would literally be like an eggshell. It would just break if you touch it. Five will do what I need it to do. That should be pretty good. So I'm going to jump forward now to support. Do I need any supports? Is it, are there any overhangs here? No, I don't need any scaffolding around it. I don't need any support. So I'm not going to bother ticking that one. Temperature. This is where most people come unstuck. What temperatures to print at? Now, PLA, for example, which is what I'm printing with here, uh, the recommendation is to print from between 210 to 220 degrees centigrade. That's the manufacturer act manufacturer's recommended kind of, you know, temperatures. I've set mine to 215, because I find this particular filament that I use prints very well at 215 degrees centigrade. I know that because I've tested it. You need to do the same with your prints. 
For example, if I get my print too hot, it will fail. If it's too cold, it will fail. I could go and buy another roll of filament from the same manufacturer, put it in at 215, and it might fail, because it might need to now print at 210. So I suggest, before you do prints, do a test. This is trial and error. You know, you'll get it right, you'll learn. It's just one of those things. The heated bed, much easier to set the temperature. I set the heated bed temperature for PLA to 60 degrees, and I set my temperature for ABS to 100 degrees. We're printing with PLA, so it's set to 60 degrees. Cooling, I let the machine do its thing. It's all preset, I just leave it alone. Uh, the rest of these I do the same. The only one that's worth looking at is other. And in here, on this particular program, I can put in the price of the filament that I paid. I pay £12 for this filament. And you can see how this is going to be useful later on when we, when we start printing. So I'm going to click OK. I'm now more than happy with the parameters that I've applied to this print. We're now going to get this ready for printing by clicking Prepare to Print. Now, we're now in the area of printing. And if you notice over here, I've got information. It's going to tell me it's going to take 22 minutes to print. But this is interesting. It's giving me the material cost, how much this is actually going to cost to print. Because I previously entered the cost of a filament, of the roll of filament, it's telling me how much filament it's going to use, the weight of filament it's going to use, and how much this print is going to cost. Which, in this software, could be extremely useful if you were going to use it commercially, or you needed to cost to print up, because you were going to sell it on, or you were going to do a, a number of prints, or something like that. So. Before we send this to the printer, we're just going to check that it's going to print all right. Um, we have this little option down here to virtually print it, to, to visualize it. So I'm going to click Visualizer, and we're going to have a look. And we're going to watch it print. So we can see here now that it's going through printing its layers. Remember, this is a virtualization. This is, this is not actually printing. It won't print this fast when it prints. This is the print head, which is simulating it, moving around. It's printing the base layers now. And remember, we, we asked it to put five layers in. So we're checking it's putting those five layers. It's now printing the walls, and they're five layers thick, these walls that are going in. Now, to give you an idea of scale, each of these big squares is one centimeter. Each of the little ones is five, uh, sorry, five mil, and this is one centimeter, 100 mil, 10 mil, sorry. Get me, get me millimeters and me centimeters right. So this is four centimeters long. So there you go, it, it, there was the top of it. So we can go back to our little, that was that top bit there, and it's now printing this wall coming up there. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to now send this to my printer to print. Now, I could use um, this symbol here. This is, my, this is my USB. I could connect my printer and my computer together via USB. The beauty of this program is I have a live control panel. So... I could actually control my print live. So let's say it wasn't quite printing properly. I could speed the print up. I can slow it down. I can make it extrude more filament. I've got complete control here via USB if something went wrong. Um, I use this sometimes. Depends on the print that I'm doing, how complex it is. This is very simple. I'm going to send this to my SD card, which is currently in my computer. I'm going to save it to my SD card, take that out of my computer when it's saved, and then transfer that to my 3D printer and then I'll start going through the printing process on the printer. Right, so there you have it. We, um, our 3D print has finished. Um, took about 22 minutes, exactly what it said, and let's see if it's worked. Yes. So, there is, um, there's something quite satisfying about printing things, you know, we drew this ourselves, we designed this ourselves, we printed it, and then now I've picked it up, it's turned into a real object. So something that was just a drawing on a computer screen is now physical, it's real. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about our 3D printers and you know, you've got a few insights in there that might help you into doing your own projects and uh, bits and pieces. Please subscribe. We have lots of different mini shows that we do each week that focus on different technical aspects of what we do here at podcast studios plus we have our main shows that are out every thursday so please subscribe and uh, i'll see you again soon